of the top five reasons why people become entrepreneurs. Number one being money. Number two is flexibility of being their own boss. Number three, control over decision making. Number four, creating a legacy, which is like leaving a footprint. And number five is to pick the team you want to work with. And, uh, you know, this last one, number five, picking up the right team, picking up the right partners is something very difficult. And not everybody is fortunate enough to find the right set of people. So in today's episode, let us chat with Aishwarya Mishra to find out how to identify right people and right partners on your entrepreneurial stint. This is the Guiding Voice podcast series, the Guiding Voice for a Better Future. Folks, I'm your host, Navin Samala, a fellow IT professional on a mission to shape the careers and lives of millions across the globe. We help successful leaders share their knowledge and wisdom with the world through the Guiding Voice, and our audience will acquire more knowledge for every minute than any other podcast in this space. Thank you so much for joining me today. And uh, we are extremely pleased to have Aishwarya part of the Guiding Voice journey in shaping the careers and lives of millions across the globe. Aishwarya, hearty welcome to TGV. Thank you so much for having me, Naveen. And thank you for giving this opportunity, having me in this platform. Uh, I have been speaking to a couple of people and some of the YouTube channels before. And I'm really, really glad that people are here to hear the voices, get inspired and you know, take the journeys forward. Yeah, absolute pleasure to have you and thanks for being part of the show. And uh, Aishwarya, let's get started. Maybe you can briefly share your career journey and top three things that have helped you so far to be successful on in your professional journey. Sure. So I uh, was actually, I'm a very, I'm a person who always wants to stand out and I always wanted to good, do good in academics and, you know, score well and learn from people, right? So eventually when I started my, I did my undergrad, I suppose that I worked with startups. I did get like in, in the multinational companies, but I always thought that startups are just like the spaces where you can, you know, work with the, uh, the, the, the small team and see the journey forward. So that's when I started working with startups and I then finally got into consulting, which is like one of the big three companies in the world. And I got through BCG and post that I actually got sponsored to have like some, do some courses like management and entrepreneurship with Harvard Business School. It was like one of the, it was it was really cool in, in terms of my career because I always wanted to start a company and that somewhat helped me to go there suppose that uh, I had an idea which I wanted to shape, right? So now I didn't, I was not from a business background. So I had to learn, I had to know what market is, how startups work, what, who are your customers, basically make a business plan. And with the business plan, I, I started reaching out to people on LinkedIn. And then I reached out to this person who was the head of technology of a company called USD Global. Like basically they this person and his wife, they agreed to join. And this was like an achievement because these people are like really, really good in what they're doing. And uh, then we went to SF and in San Francisco, we got the fourth partner who's already a tech entrepreneur there. So we formed a team of four and we started this journey and we are in the better stage. So let's see how it goes. Um, coming back to the question of three things that has actually helped me is the first one being very persistent and planning your days because everyone has got a job and everyone is working nine to five. It is what you do out of that after that five o'clock is what matters and planning that kind of weekends and, you know, sort of like being consistent is one of the first things. And second thing being, being very focused about the end goal. So you should be very clear about like what you want in life and, you know, working towards it. Sometimes it happens, sometimes it doesn't, but having that clear picture in your mind is very, very important. And third thing is, uh, that's what my dad always says, that you have to learn from people, no matter, it doesn't need to be Jeff Bezos, right? It can be any other entrepreneur, it can be anyone. If, if your goal is fitness, you learn from people who are really fit. So learning from people, leveraging their, you know, resources is also very important. Mm -hmm. so, persistence, and then not forgetting about the end goal, learning from people. Wonderful. Aishwarya, did you ever think about embarking on this entrepreneurial journey or how did that happen? Well, I always wanted to build something, shape it up 
put in efforts and see like basically like how you have a baby and you see the entire journey of the baby becoming you know putting in your values and seeing what exactly you want to put in your baby and you know growing that person up is something as creating your own company uh, it can be entrepreneurship it can be intrapreneurship which is like starting something in your own company that you're working in but having an idea shaping it up to become or build it something is always something that motivated me and that's when i started yeah. okay now let's talk about the background of the name like how did you come up with susup um i do ask i get asked a lot about this question trust me when uh, when we started going into the legal sides so of getting a lawyer or getting you know a, mentors or angel investors or reach out to people the first question is how did you get the name you know i am modest here part i we did like a lot of things i'm a person like who always is not happy with things i always want to do more and what could be the best and we had like a couple of names but you know it all, again depends what you want to do as an application so we wanted to help people build something i'll tell you like in a couple of minutes what we're doing but so helping so su is a word which is that word that when we say su chef right this means somebody who's an assistant so we got the word as su up which means that we are assisting you so basically that's what the name came and i'm so happy that people really like it and they're very intrigued by the name so yeah indeed indeed yeah i i like it can you talk about talk a bit about your venture what susup does and what kind of services are you offering because you said it's all about we are here to assist right right yeah so susup is is a social commerce platform which is smart and it gives you like a personalized shopping experience and helps for to people in all types of tier 2 tier 3 cities to come and sell on board for example my mom this is something that i say to everyone like right? she's not a person who knows technology really well and the only thing that she knows is probably whatsapp so we are building a platform and and she's a great cook and she makes some sort of like regional you know food that is very very specific to the place that i belong to so she would be able to come to the platform it's so simple just start upload her pictures or videos of products that she's selling and like start selling on the platform and uh, there are other sellers her friends who can see what she's selling and we have our system made in certain ways that we will push notifications to nearby people to come and see okay this is something which is very regional and they can have or relish the taste and it's a video sharing platform so that that means that instead of just going to amazon or or, or any other e-commerce platform just going in and picking whatever is there here you can rather see the experience of what is made you know how you see on the facebook videos of ladies making in the villages so similarly you can have the experience and you know come back in the and the interesting fact is a lot of ladies in the nearby societies they are very very interested to join so let's see how it goes that's that's nice and i wish you all the best on your venture all right now uh, can you share some toughest lessons that you learned in this while while you have uh, on your entrepreneurial journey and all well uh, yeah so this is something that we read across a lot of books right we have seen like the great mindsets talking about it and it is absolutely true and i have been facing the same thing in one and a half years it's just that first thing is you always going to be alone in the journey it's not like you don't expect support from people because it's something that you're building and there's no way to know it's going to work or not unless you execute so having or expecting the support or like basically it means that you're going to be very alone in the journey but still you got to put smile on your face and be like what you are and be humble and just take it forward that's something that was very tough and i don't nothing comes easy mhm great uh- and uh, you mentioned you pursued uh, management essentials course from hbs right so yeah, management and entrepreneurship yeah management and entrepreneurship so how did this help how did this harvard uh, course help you in your venture right so we did have like a couple of case studies like i said i never had a business background so at least understanding how people already went through and how it is really good with making the case materials and you know understanding how the past has been with real life examples and talking to these people learning from them and you know meeting people from across the globe so these were some of the things that really appreciate about the course but at the end of the day it is all about how you execute your plan but but getting the experience from others so 
All right, now digging back onto the finding the partners and all, you briefly mentioned about some technology leaders joining you and all. So, can you share the importance of having the right people and how do you spot right uh, partners when we embark on this uh, entrepreneurship? Uh, that's a very intense and a good question. So, let's talk about relationships. When you get married, uh, you always are scared about who is the partner going to be, and it is always the same thing i mean finding a partner for your business always like is also like finding a partner for your life right you got to have you got to have like the top three things like trust maybe you know or compatibility understanding each other when you have problems and so so many things like nuances that comes in um the come in in a relationship is the same thing as you got to find in your partner as well so it's not like okay somebody is smart we are working on the same thing I, I see a couple of friends doing the same mistake, and they, for some reasons, had to go apart. Apart their ways. It's unfortunate, but it is an investment. Like finding a life partner or finding any other partner, it's similar to having like a venture partner or a business, partner, right? So, uh, it is a difficult thing, but you gotta like look up to it. Find people who are compatible, uh, and you know, start the journey. Mm-hmm. Excellent. All right. So now, uh, can you share with our audience on how to retain sanity and being persistent? Uh, that's a, again a good question. Um, well, we all have ups and downs, right? So it's not something that you know will always be happy. But like you know, you gotta be smiling. And it's, it, you have problems. You have problems with your vendors. You have problems with business. You have problems. Customers, things are not working. There are delays. Product is crashing. So these are the problems we always face, and it's it's normal to maintain the sanity. I guess it's always going to be thinking about your own, like your own end goal, or learning from people. Like you'd have heard a lot of people writing books uh, that hey, you know what? Even uh, I don't remember the company, but there was this person that uh, came across uh, in uh, Harvard. And this person said that for the first 2.5 years, they had zero left. And now they're a billion dollar company, right? So it all depends and you have to learn from people and have to take it as a part of life. So I think that's how you mm-hmm. Great insight so far. And uh, Aishwarya, I would like to spice in up this conversation. And uh, with your consent, let me open a quick rapid fire round if you are ready. Sure. All right, so that's the spirit, and uh, let me hop onto the rapid fire and fire the first bullet. What is your favorite animal? Oh, I actually love animals and birds. So everyone, I cannot choose. I'm a big, big animal lover. So <laughs> good, good. Uh, all right, so moving on to the next one. What is the best piece of advice that you received so far? Oh, uh, so it's from my. It was from my dad. And it's like, you got to be the dumbest person in the room. That's how you learn. If you are like the smartest person, you're never going to. What does your dad do, if I may ask? He he retired as a chief finance officer from Cold India. Oh. And it's yeah, last Excellent. year. Mm-hmm. All right. So moving on. Uh, if you had to change your first name, what would you change it to? Well, I'm happy with my name. It's just spelling that I don't like, but it's okay. I should well. <laughs> Fair enough. All right. Moving on. Here comes the interesting one. Have you ever written a song for someone? Uh, yeah, that's a good question. No, I have written poems in my life and I have won a couple of awards for that. But songs, uh, maybe I'm not that romantic yet. I haven't found the love of my life. So let's see. All maybe. right. <laughs> Good. And and do you remember any of those poems? It was about rainfall. It was about animals. It was about kids. So yeah, stuff like that. So was it in English or uh, any other language? In English. English. Ah. Interesting. All right. So what the last one for the rapid fire. What is one electronic gadget that you'd like to see or invent yourself? <laughs> I actually uh, don't like when it's hot. So I was fantasized about this product that I like a clothing that has inbuilt air conditioner and I always wear and go. But jokes on a lighter note apart, I think uh, I'm a big animal lover. So I not not like a technology, but some sort of mock me that if we can introduce the world and less killing of animals, that was something I would really look forward to. 
Great. Yeah. That, that's a noble thought, creating this uh, mock meat. In fact, it is available right now in the States, right? A few companies yeah. have already selling it. And, yeah. Absolutely. Yes. Synthetic meat. Yeah. All right. Great. So that has been a fabulous rapid fire. And with that, let's uh, flip back to the mainstream and one final question for today's conversation. So sure. Aishwarya, what will be your one piece of advice to those aspiring to make big in their careers? Uh, weekends. Focus on your weekends. Very important. Everyone has got a nine to five job. It is the thing that's going to put you aside is what you do of your free time. Uh, the person who started Instagram did his building during the weekend. So it all depends how you use the time and you work on it. All right. Yeah, that's a great uh, advice. And thank you so much, Aishwarya, for being part of the show. I really enjoyed the conversation. Glad to have you part of the journey. Sure. Thank you so much, Naveen, for having this conversation. So folks, before we move into the trivia section, here is a small request. Please subscribe to us in case if you haven't done already. Also, if you have loved this conversation and found it useful, please share with at least three of your friends or colleagues who can benefit from the guiding voice. All right. Now let's hop into the trivia segment of today's episode. Today's trivia is about a typical entrepreneur and I'm going to share a few fun facts, starting with the average age of an entrepreneur is 40 years and 70% of them are married. And less than 1% come from either extremely rich or extremely poor backgrounds. And you know, 51.9% of them are first in their family to launch a business. And 66 hours are spent by an average entrepreneur, whereas employees work about uh, 47 hours per week. And uh, last one, startups with two founders are most successful. So likewise, uh, the list goes on. But I'm going to stop here. And in case if you know any fellow entrepreneur who had moved out of their comfort zone and started impacting in the world or started impacting the world, please share their profile with us and we would love to host them. You can contact me through any social media platforms or drop a note on the getting voice for you at gmail.com. That's all for today. Thank you so much for joining me. Folks, I'm your host, Naveen. A fellow IT professional and a passionate learner on a mission to make a difference in the careers and lives of millions across the globe. Until next time, bye-bye. See you all in the next episode.